One of the questions asked was, what kind of frosting do you use on your cookie when you're going to watercolor on it? A lot of frosting can be adversely affected by the vodka that's used in watercolor uh, painting on cookies. Uh, I use Sweet Hope icing recipe. It's half royal icing, half glaze. Uh, when I'm making it for the second part of the recipe for the glaze, I continue adding powdered sugar until it's a very thick consistency, similar to what you see here. And then I mix it with my royal icing. Um, this is, I make a huge tub of it. It's very thick. And then I thin it out to flood my cookies. So I typically like to have a 10 second flood icing, um, so I'm just going to add my water. That's a little bit less than 10, it's about a 7 or an 8 second flood. Um, and you can tell flood consistency by dragging your spatula or knife or spoon through the frosting and counting the seconds until the line disappears. Um, I'm typically very loose with my frosting. I like a very loose, soft flood. It fills quickly, fills easily, and then I let my icing harden overnight on the counter, um, just out in the open. I don't put my cookies in any containers when they're drying. I do after, after I frost them. So I'm just gonna put this in my piping bag. I use a tipless piping bag and just tie it up. There's already icing on the outside. That's okay. I'm just gonna cut the tip off and flood one of the cookies to show you. So I just frosted that cookie and I think I needed my tip to be a little bit bigger. So I trimmed off a little bit there. And I'll frost another one. So the reason I make my frosting, my base frosting, so thick is that I sometimes like to make roses with the icing. Um, and I like to have an already thick icing that all I have to do is add water to if needed, as opposed to a thinner icing that I would then have to add powdered sugar to in order to make my flowers. I draw my lines a little inside the cookie. Uh, if I were doing this for an order, I would use my scribe to get all the way up to the very edges, but um, I'm just gonna be practicing watercolors with these, so. I'll do another one. The trick with a thinner frosting is not to try to do the details with the frosting in the bag. So you do your main section. It's going to flood beautifully, come together, no lines, a nice loose flood. You can fill in the little extras with your icing, the little missed pieces, or use your scribe. And then you just want to do very tiny details. 
I'm going to use my scribe to get up close to the edges. And I'll show you that here. I don't always. Cookie art, like real art, depends on who's making it. If you don't want your icing to go to the edges, don't put it to the edges. But if you want it to go to the edges, just grab your scribe. One thing I will tell you to be careful of, which I do all the time, did it on my last cookie that I just held, I will quite often stick my finger into the icing on the side as I'm holding it. But you'll see, I'm gonna stop here in a minute and only do half the cookie, just so I can show you guys what it looks like. But you see with a loose flood, you can still get all the way up to the edges with your scribe. It takes a little bit longer, but you save a lot of time from not having to swirl your scribe around on the inside of that cookie. That flood's beautiful. And it's gonna dry smooth, hopefully. I'm a huge fan of a very loose flood. And then we're gonna watercolor on this tomorrow after this dries overnight. So when you're doing watercolors, I always flood one day, typically in the evening, because I do work during the day. But I'll flood all my cookies in the evening and set them on the counter overnight and then package them up first thing in the morning, either in a Ziploc bag or a Rubbermaid container, something to get them out of the air. Because you want your icing dry, dry enough to paint on, but not dry enough to chip a tooth. And you'll notice it's such a loose flood that even however many minutes we're into detailing this cookie, it's still coming together. We don't have any lines. No issues. Just don't stick your finger in it like I do all the time. Every once in a while your scribe will leave a mark. But you just flatten that out and there you go. There's my flooded cookie. Ready for some watercoloring. I'm not a huge fan of wasting time with scribing every cookie. I have four kids and a full-time job. So you won't catch me taking this all the way to the edges quite often when I'm doing something important or a cookie that has a specific um, for a specific reason. For instance, I'm doing baby shower cookies next week, so I'll take my time with those, but if I'm just doing sets that I'm gonna sell, Mother's Day, Father's Day, this is about what you'll get. There really isn't that much difference. I might fix up these edges here. Now you see the difference in time. 
but do you really see a huge difference in the cookie? I don't. I guess that's personal preference though. But there's your frosting. There's the frosting I use.